This video is to demonstrate how to create a day sheet in SimChart for the medical office. Because a day sheet is a financial document or form, it will be completed using the coding and billing module tab. So you will need to click on the coding and billing module tab found at the top of your SimChart screen. It will open to your uh, coding and billing information panel. It is in the same section that includes your super bill, ledgers, and claims. The day sheet is a summarization or a tally sheet, if you will, of all transactions that are taking place during the day. It is a summarization of your accounts receivable and is a type of accounting form. You will select the day sheet from the dashboard or information panel located on the left hand side of your screen. It will open. You will have two options. If you've created previous day sheets, they will be uh, visible under the saved data or saved day sheets. Um, however, it will default to your new day sheet. Um, so it will open a blank day sheet. Day sheets are traditionally um, completed one for each day. However, if there are only a few or if the person that uh, is responsible for completing this form is um, not in the office, it may be accumulation of multiple days. Therefore, when you come in, you will click Add Row and you will enter the actual day that you are making this log or entry onto your day sheet. So this should always be your current day. This is not the date of service. However, it may be the same as the date of service if you are entering your summarizations and your super bill transactions um, for your super bills and your patients that you've gathered throughout the day or days um, as your patients are checking out, then you may have the same date of entry as your date of service. But be made aware that this particular date is the date that you are making this entry. So you'll click on your calendar icon. You will click the date of the current date or date of entry. You will manually have to type your patient's name. It should be last name, comma, first name, and include any middle initials that you have. So we will just say, um, use our test patient. You will select the provider that performed the service. Now on your electronic day sheets, each service will have to be entered as a individual um, service code. You can click in the service box and manually type in. So if it was an established patient OV with a CBC, you can physically do it this way. Um, so that it resembles more of your handwritten or manual uh, day sheets that you're hand, handwriting these items in. If you have multiple services, and this is why we don't always do this, but if you have and you are entering multiple services this way, you would need to make sure that you have a total or cumulative charge amount right here. So if your office visit was $50 and your CBC test was $20, then your charge amount would have to be 70. So you can see where this may be a little confusing if you try to start combining all of this on a singular line. However, your manual um, day sheets may actually have you do this for space sake. Um, you know, if there was an adjustment, then of course you would have to make sure that you, um, you know, put it in, whether it's a positive adjustment where we're adding to the balance 
or if it's a um, or taking away or if we're adding back so make sure you know and watch your balances as to whether it's a negative or a positive amount that we're entering if there is no adjustment then you enter your zero now your new balance is going to be your new balance for this patient's super bill. This is taking into account and assuming that you have checked your patient's previous balance. This should be written at the top of your uh, paper super bills if you're in the manual system or hopefully you have already um, gathered the this information and have it readily available for your patients as you're entering this in um, because you should have already checked to make sure if there was a previous balance say of uh, $20 that if your patient made a $10 payment that you've added your total charges plus your previous balance subtracted any payments to come up with your new balance this new balance should be the amount due that is the balance that is reflected in your patient's ledger so if you quickly did the math it would be 70 plus our previous balance would be 90 minus a ten dollar payment would be my new balance should be eighty dollars if you watch your columns over here you will see that it's already given me that information so it just helps you double check your math. Um, now this is a cumulative column. So for each um, patient, you would continue this same process. So if my next patient that came in was Miss Washington, and it was the provider, Martin, um, your SIM chart recommends, and oftentimes the EHRs will prefer you putting in your numeric codes and do each service um, separately. So if she had, just like the one above, you had your office visit, instead of typing in EPOV, you would put the procedure code, but you would do them on separate transaction lines, just like your ledger, so it more readily matches your ledger um, so you would enter your charge at fifty dollars and if she still made a payment we would still do the ten dollar payment zero adjustment if she had um, say she also had the twenty dollar you would still do your fifty minus the ten dollar payment and so you would still want to add these together so her new balance would be 60 and you're like well there's a $20 difference um, that's because traditionally we would want to enter that CBC on a separate transaction line so it would be like this So you would see those two different transaction charges, and this was where our CBC charge, you would see them split up instead of combined like they are up here. You would have no payment on this part, no adjustment. Um, and so now there would, her previous balance is 60, and we're gonna add the $20 charge, so it would make it a new $80 balance. So if you were to go and check all your math as it continues to go down, um, your numbers should match. If you had an insurance payment, then you would do the same thing. An insurance payment was received today. If it was for our test patient, then we can fill in our columns just like we did if it was our previous um, items 
you would this is where you would need to put in instead of a numeric procedure code you would need to put in if you know the name of the insurance company you would want to type that in um, you could do Blue Cross Blue Shield check number and that would ultimately let me know that that is an insurance payment enter your check number there would be no charges um, this is a payment so if it was a payment for we said this was for um, our test patient and they're paying um, say they're paying fifty dollars they're adjusting off ten dollars so our balance at that time was 80 so that's what you would put in your old balance and so our new balance if it was 80 minus 50 and a $60, I mean a $10 adjustment means we're taking $60 off of our $80 balance for that patient would mean they have a $20 balance that we can expect. So this is just your general math, adding and subtracting. The hardest part is going to be remembering which column you're adding and subtracting, as well as remembering to get your um, previous balances from your ledgers and then carrying them down. Rarely will you ever have an insurance payment received on the same day that you're posting a transaction. Um, so if this patient, say they had that $20 balance, it more likely would be they're coming in and paying $15 on that balance. We're going to write off $5 and that would leave our new balance of just this particular visit information which would be $60. Notice though on all of these um, as it goes through it is adjusting your balances so you will not be required to do the math in sim chart for this however when you're doing it manually you still need to understand where these numbers come from how to add and subtract these numbers to get and confirm your final uh, balances. Um, notice my accounts receivable for the day has, um, is that an even 2,400? So we started out with our previous balance of 2,300. We've added our charges, subtract all of our payments, subtract our adjustments. And so what, um, how much more money can we anticipate to receive and it adjusts it accordingly. Your deposit proof, this is cash or checks that have been received for the day and it should represent our payments. And so as you can see, we've got 10, 20, $35 that we've received in payments, whether this is check or cash that needs to be addressed and deposited into our check register or if it's, um, if it was indeed cash or check, it needs to go into um, a bank deposit or it needs to be written as um, a deposit that is going into our check registry, especially if it was credit cards because those are already received. So once you've got all of your super bills and your payments and insurance checks that have been uh, received for the day, all of your accounts receivables have been documented and notated on your day sheet, you're ready to hit save. Notice it says save successful. If I want to view it, then I click the drop down. It pulls my uh, day sheet and now I can go view it and edit my row entries as necessary. If I need to print it, then I can click on print, click print again, open up my print screen or dialog box using Google Chrome. I can change it to save as PDF to upload it to my Blackboard assignment, or I can print it out manually. So that I can turn it in for class. Once I have completed that, this is here for you to edit and it will continue on. This concludes how to create, update, and edit our day sheets, how to view our saved day sheets. So tomorrow 
you would be coming into the office at the end of the day or the first thing in the morning, you would create a new day sheet. So once you click on new day sheet, it's going to start a new one and you would just continue on by selecting your new dates. You would continue with your patient's name. Um, let's see. You would select your providers and you just continue on. And as you can see, add our charges, any payments or no payments, adjustments, make sure you enter zeros. Uh, the new balance would be whatever. Once I've checked that ledger or that super bill and made sure I've carried those over and you just continue on down. Notice it's already added column E. There was no old balance. I've got zero here plus column A. And so it kind of guides you through down here and you can see what I entered, whether it was um, added or subtracted from your totals and how it is directly affecting our um, patient ledgers. Um, do note that even though I just came in and I did a separate day, the accounts receivable, because this is an educational tool, you may not see your accounts receivable balance change like you would doing your manual where you're traditionally what your balance was from your saved day sheet, your previous day, which I think was 2400 This would increase with each day's accounts receivable and decrease um, in regards to payments that are received. So just note that um, because this is a educational EHR, you will not see this amount change like it would if you were doing consecutive daily balance sheets in your textbook exercises. So that is one little difference here that we need to be made aware of. All right, so this concludes our video on how to create, update, and edit a day sheet using SimChart for the medical office.